Hi, it's Cherry and Baby Enya here. We're going to be looking at an exercise called hip roll. Um, Pilates teachers out there, you'll know it's one of the best exercises in the world. We're looking at the clinical approach to hip rolls. We're also looking at different methodology of working with that rotation from lower down the spine. Ankles and knees are glued together. Particularly, we're going to look at if somebody's had a hip, recent hip replacement or if you feel that somebody with a hip replacement needs to have a little bit of gap between the legs, using a chi ball between the knees, yeah, or a little block, maybe a folded towel. What isn't really appropriate is something like a yoga block because very often then they'll have to grip to try and keep it in place. So Enya hasn't had a hip replacement yet. Ankles and knees glued together. I'm going to get Enya to put her hands on her ribs and just to feel that the ribs are down at the front of the body. And any of you take your thumbs to the around the back of your ribs like this, let your elbows relax. So what she's gonna try and do is make sure that the ribs at the back and the front of the body stay still. So we're looking at somebody with sacroiliac joint injuries. They can still do this exercise, but with maybe a reduced range of movement. You must ensure that somebody with a sacroiliac problem keeps their feet together. So I'm going to start Enya going as far as she comfortably can, right? That left foot can come off the floor, beautiful, and then come back to centre. Always coming back to centre and changing sides. So specifically, guys, if you're dealing with people with lower back pain, always come back into the centre as you're doing that movement. Lovely. So I'm going to get Enya to go as far as she can do without moving the back of her ribs. Keeping the front of the ribs down, keeping the back, so stop about there, Enya, before you get to that point, lovely, and come back to centre. So at this point, Enya's doing some rotational work, but keeping the back of the ribs down. So you'll see that the range of movement is reduced. This is more suitable, maybe not even going as far, Enya, for somebody who's maybe got stenosis or got spondylolisthesis. Keep it with a small range of movement that, of course, should be pain-free and not increasing any of their symptoms. Once you know somebody is comfortable with this, then I would start to let them move the ribs. So the pelvis moves first, the waistband, now the back of the ribs, the shoulder blade, but not the shoulder joint. So you can progress the movements with general back pain, particularly sciatic pain, but not with stenosis or spondylolisthesis. Also with degenerative disc disease, they may need to keep the range of movement slightly smaller. So presuming they are pain free and they don't have any of those conditions, they can continue to increase the range of movement. As Enya keeps doing that, just breathing subconsciously, I'm getting Enya to pull her ribs down at the front of the body. Feel the pelvis, the waistband, the back of the ribs, the shoulder blade, but not the shoulder joint. So you can increase that range of movement by always, even with my advanced groups, start this exercise with the back of the ribs down, which encourages a little bit more work into the oblique muscles. We're going to do one more on each side and all the time ankles and knees glued together. So if somebody has a sacroiliac joint, they must not change that position, keeping the ankles glued together. Come back into centre, have a breather. So generally that exercise is good for everyday back pain and for some disc problems it's good. Sciatica, see how they go and it should be pain free. Hip replacements may need something between the knees and if somebody's got spondylos sorry stenosis or spondylolisthesis degenerative disc disease they keep the range of move smaller yep i call that one of the best exercises so thank you so much and see you again